All right, welcome everybody. I apologize on the stream again. Uh, I'm still trying to work through all the settings in OBS and Twitch and how to get the audio synced up and the right frame rates. And I don't know if I've got a computer problem or what, but I just tested my internet. I've got 100 megs down, 50 megs up. So if I drop frames today, I don't know what it is. I'll have to keep playing with it. So just bear with me as I figure out all these technical details as I stream more often, get more comfortable with it. So uh, enough of that, let's get into it. So uh, again, we're working on Deploy the Fleet, trying to get it launched. And I handed it over to somebody today to kind of give it a walkthrough. And just I just gave him the website. Um, he has a um, an ESP32 board, dev board that he could test with. And I just said, if you could just try and go through the instructions and just I'm going to give you the main landing page to to hit and then hopefully you can figure out where to go from there and how things work and how to do things. And he didn't have quite enough time to get all the way through to loading a firmware, but he did give me a ton of feedback on the how what he thought about the the site and some things that he got hung up on and confusing and um, you know, a lot of this is helpful feedback, some of its opinion, and part of building this is being able to decide and determine like what what feedback do you listen and act on or what feedback do you listen and say, okay, that's interesting, but I'm not going to change that or I'm not going to change it the way you think it should because you can't cater to every single person. You're trying to get the, the overall experience the best you can. And so uh, I really appreciated him taking the time to do that. And I did get some good um things to work on and across all three repos. And so we're going to start here on the website. Uh, he said, remove the terminology page. So let's just go and check that out here. No, not app dot deploy the fleet, just deploy the fleet. Deploy the fleet.io. So as part of the getting started, it drops you into the, what is the, what is deploy the fleet? And the Jekyll, Theme that I'm using has this previous and next. And so you can kind of like read down and say, oh, next. And it'll take you to create an account. And when I hit next, it'll take me to initial setup like this. Uh, but then I have this terminology, which I laid out like the way I did this is I, I figured out what I wanted my navigation to look like. And uh, I threw terminology in there because I thought it might be helpful. But like, as I'm looking through this, it's like product, firmware, device, OTA, like all of these are self-explanatory. The feedback he gave was it, it breaks up the setup flow. So you're going from creating an account, initial setup, and then this weird terminology. And then I go into dashboard that kind of explains how the dashboard works and the firmware and device view. He's like, nothing I don't know about here on terminology, which is one of those pieces of feedback where you think, well, maybe that's just because you know those things, but it might be helpful to other people. But as I got to think about it, like if you're going to use this service and you don't know what firmware means or device means, um, you're probably not in need of the service. Now, product is kind of a, a specific item to this. And I think that's probably why I initially added the page, but we're just going to pull it out. I, I think the feedback was valid. It kind of breaks up the flow of getting started. And so uh, we're going to remove that. So that was the first issue is remove the terminology page. And the second one is the create account should open in new tabs. So another thing that he said threw him off was, you know, there's the website, which is a static Jekyll site. And then there is the app, which is the Quasar development. I mean, it's, it's a whole separate repo, in fact from the website. And so when you hit launch app, you'll notice we go from deploy the fleet.io to app.deploythefleet.io. And you'll notice that it launched in another page. And so if somebody was going through the instructions, they could just click back over here and keep going through. So that works nicely. However, if you're going through and you come in to create an account and then you click uh, create an account, it just takes you right over. And now um, the way that he had put it was I didn't realize that I'm now on essentially a different site, even though it, you know, it's supposed to feel all the same. And he's like, so I, I lost like where I was and trying to get started. And so the, the feedback was that should, this create an account should open a new tab. This login should open in a new tab. Um, I believe on this main page, these all open in the same tab. Yeah. So all of these create an account buttons, I think those are all of them on what it is, create these two buttons, and then I believe that's it. 
um, oh, in the home page, I believe as well. All of those should, by default, open up a new uh, tab. Yeah, create an account here is gonna do the same thing. Okay, so let's change that really quick. That's what we're gonna. That's what we're gonna do. Um. So if you remember, we just need to launch our Jekyll here. Do Jekyll serve. And while that's launching, let's just take care of these things. So the terminology, I think I'm just gonna delete all together. I'm just gonna get rid of the page completely because we don't need it. So we'll do delete. And then we also have to remove it from the navigation. So terminology, we'll get rid of here. And I think that should do it for us. Um, sorry, I'm gonna like be self-consciously checking the drop frames here to make sure everything is streaming all right to Twitch for us. And okay, so let's do the index first, actually. Index. And for those that care or interested, the the website is actually open source, like this uh, this repo over here in the deploy the fleet organization this is just you could log your own issues on it if you find something confusing if you're using the the, the website um, and contributions are always welcome if you're looking for uh, an open source project to help out on I uh, would love love any help if you want to provide it okay so the the reason that those buttons open in the same tab is because if we scroll down for example this one create an account I'm just using straight markdown and I don't believe there's a way, these are classes. I don't think there's a way to mark up a, uh, let's, uh, let's search real quick. I don't, I don't think, what I was gonna say is, I don't think there's a way to use pure markdown here or even decorated markdown to, op to trigger something to open in a new tab. And so I think what we would have to do here is actually do something uh, like, you know, create a button and uh, do the actual HTML and add the target underscore blank. But let's let's just do a quick target blank markdown button. I don't know. Can I create links with target equals blank and markdown? As far as markdown scene size concerns, if you want to do that detailed, you just have to use HTML. Okay, yeah, and that's what I that's what I suspected. Um, now just one more we'll we'll actually do markdown button, we'll do Jekyll. Because maybe Oh, it's a it's a plugin. So if I wanted to install Jekyll target blank, and then it would allow me to do Oh, all anchor tags are rendered. Markdown. Yeah, and that's not what I want because I don't want all of them to do that. That's that's weird. Okay, I'm, I'm not even going to mess with it. What we're going to do is we'll just go to here. We'll do inspect on the button itself. And we'll just grab... Copy element. Okay, that was. And then we should be able to just paste it. Yes, okay. Class that, and then all we'll do here is say target equals underscore blank. I'm gonna leave them both for a second. So that'll rebuild. Let's come back over. Oops. Now let's do localhost instead of the actual deployed version. What's that? And I should have two buttons now, and they should. Oh, I, I, I know why they're different. But so this one, if I click it, it's going to open in the same window. But this one should now open. A new tab, which it does. Cool. And 
And so, great. So what we'll do then, oh, because I've got that text center. Uh, I don't know if that's still going to work. Let's do that. Let's get rid of this. Save it, have it rebuild. And we'll refresh. Perfect. And then that should launch in a new tab, which it does. Okay, so now we just one down. What is it? Three to go. Get started. Okay, so I'm just going to actually copy this and go to what is it? And just make sure everything's the same. Create an account now. Button, button info, button large. Yep, that's all the same. And then there's one at the bottom here. Create an account now. Button, button info, button large. Great. So that looks good. And so now this should open in a new tab, which it does. This should open in a new tab, which it does. Cool. And then on the create an account, we need to do the same thing. Oh, because I X'd it. Uh, let's come back over and grab this. Okay. This one's going to be just create an account. Button, button info, button large. So that's all correct. And then I'm not sure why there's such a huge gap there. And then right here, we're going to do the same thing, except this one's going to be log in. And it's just going to be deploy the fleet because it will automatically redirect to the login if you're not already logged in. We'll test that here in a second. We'll do create an account. This should open in a new tab now, which it does. And login takes us to the login. Okay, cool. I believe that is launch app already does that. Nice view, manage from. I think everything else is good. None of the quick starts have a login button. So cool. That is it. That's all we have to do for those changes. So these are issues number one and two. And what we can do actually is over here in VS Code, I really like the GitHub integration in VS Code. And so let me show you the flow that I would use for interacting with Git and GitHub. I know a lot of people like the command line, but I, I really like the, the built-in tools um, that are provided within Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna come over here to the changes, uh, the GitHub, uh, Git, sorry, not GitHub, Git, tab and it'll show me here all your changes and when you click on it it'll show you a side by side which is really handy like if you've used git diff and you love it like props on being a real hacker i really like seeing it side by side it, it helps me so i removed the terminology oh which let's test that really quick um so now when we go from initial setup and we hit next it should just go to dashboard which it does okay so that's all working and terminology is gone Okay, so we remove terminology and then you just have this little stage change and you can stage them all with the plus up here or just the stage change right here. So we'll go ahead and stage that and then I just go through it. Like, what is it? I replace this with HTML, both top and bottom. That looks good. We tested it. Uh, create an account, same thing. We replaced the markdown with actual HTML, which you can do. HTML is always valid in markdown. Uh, terminology I got rid of, so I want to keep that change. And then on index, I made this open up in a, a new tab as well using HTML instead of Markdown. 
So I'll do that, and then what I'll do is I'll say, uh, um, oh, what are we going to say? Account buttons open in new tab. And then uh, this is a GitHub um, pro tip. I don't know if it's a pro tip. It's a GitHub medium tip. <laughs> if you just uh, down in anywhere in the description, you normally do two, um, you keep a new line in there. You can say resolves number one and resolves number two. And what we're doing there is back over here, you can see the issues have a number. This one's number two. You can see it right there. And this one's number one. By putting that in the commit message, GitHub, when we push it, we'll see, oh, you've resolved, this is supposed to resolve those issues. And I'll, and I'll show you what it, it does. So I'm going to put resolves number one and resolves number two. And then I'm going to commit it. And what we'll do is we will push it. And then if we come back over here and we'll just give GitHub a second and it should automatically close these. So if we just refresh now, you can see I have zero open and two closed automatically. I didn't have to do anything. And if I come over to the closed items and I click on them, it'll say Sidwar KD close this in and it'll link to the commit and everything. So really great for keeping an audit trail of how you addressed items, um, issues on your repo is, is just mentioning them. Like I say, in the commit message like that, and there's a bunch of built-in stuff from GitHub that will, will do cool things for you to, to keep everything orderly and organized. So that was it for the website changes. Um, so what do we want to tackle next? Stand by, let me check on my drop frames. We're looking good still. Okay, good. Oh, look, somebody came in the chat room and says, want to become famous? Buy followers. Where do these people come from? I don't know. I'm not going to buy any followers. Um, all right. That takes care of the website stuff. Now, let me look at, I've got some outstanding issues on the front end. So let's look at the front end code. So we're done. We're done with the website changes. We push those uh, on render. What I can do actually is redeploy that. So I'll do manual deploy, deploy latest commit. Again, static sites are free to host on render.com for now. Uh, there's no affiliate there or anything. I just, it's a new service that I'm using and that I'm enjoying. So um, I think it's been so far a little nicer than Heroku to me personally. That's a personal opinion. Um, but uh, so we'll go ahead and deploy that. And we'll let that run. And then let's go ahead and get the. Let's open up the, the front end project. So we'll do open recent DTF front end. So this is the Quasar app. And main layout, why are we split viewing here? Okay. So the next piece of feedback that the person who tested for me today gave was we need a way to get back to the docs from the app. So once we launch the app, and uh, let me actually check, it might be deployed already. Your site is live. Cool. So now if we come back to home here, no, not localhost. Um, sorry, uh, deploy the fleet.io. Now if we come in to get started, terminology is gone on the live site. So it's really cool that you can just do stuff that fast. Like, um, I know there's lots of ways to deploy websites, but it's always fun to see how quickly you can go from developing to having it live on the internet, you know. So we'll go to create an account. And now if I click on create an account, it opens up in a new tab, which is really cool. And so we'll go to login and let's log in.
and invalid credentials. There we go. So the, they got here and part of this was because it replaced this page. And so they were just on a single tab. And then he was like, well, how do I get back to the documentation from here? And there is no way there's, you know, there's no link. He's looking for like a, a deploy the fleet icon or something to say, take me back to the documentation or open the documentation. Again, it probably should be in another tab because the app really is separate from the site. Like it's, it's a self-contained um, thing. And I guess uh, it does make sense for them to, to run together. But the fact I'm trying my best to conceal the fact that they are completely separate repositories running completely different technologies. One's a, a, a Jekyll Ruby based static site. And the app here is a single page application running the Quasar uh, uh, framework written in uh, TypeScript. And so they're completely different, but you're trying your best to make them be a cohesive unit. And so it would be nice to get back to uh, the main deploy the fleet site from here. I don't think once you become accustomed to using the service, like that's probably not a use case that matters to you because everything you'll need to operate and use the service can be found right here in the app. And the, the website's more of just like a, a marketing, hey, this is what deploy the fleet is. And Here's how you get started. And I mean, if anybody wants to read the blog post that I'll put on there, which will mostly be about like features and stuff. But otherwise, everything that you need to do with Deploy the Fleet is in the app. And so I'm not worried about uh, his suggestion was you should have a header that looks just like this. That is the app. And then you can go back to all the other things. I'm not going to do that because I don't I don't agree quite with that. Like, I don't think there should be a header here. I like how it's a contained application. And there's also reasons for that that go beyond just preference, which is using Quasar, I could build this as a native app for, you know, iOS. And in that case, it, it's weird. Like now it is, it is truly an app. It's not a web app. It's an, it's a native app and having like a, a web browser, a web page header nav is, is weird. Right. And so I think it's okay to keep them separate as long as they feel cohesive enough. And so what we're going to do, I think, in thinking about this, the two ideas that I had for addressing that particular piece of feedback uh, would be to either add another navigation thing over here that takes us back to the website, or put something up here that's like a little book, you know, read the docs, or not read the docs, you know, a little book, that when you hover over it, it says documentation and when you click on it, it opens a new tab. And so what we'll do is, and we could have both. So I think I'm going to, let's code up both, see how they look, and then we'll make a decision on one or the other or both. And it has been a while since I've touched the front end code for this. So this could be an adventure bear with me. Um, Okay, adding it, first of all, adding it over here is going to be super easy because of how Quasar sets this up out of the box. And I will show you how we're going to do that. What you do is you have a, well, if I can remember, goodness, let me collapse some of this stuff. Um, I don't need public open. I do need source open. I don't need boot open. We are going to go into essential link and we show all the essential links not in the components yet it's in the layouts it's in the main layout down here here we go we have this links data array in typescript and you can see dashboard firmware devices and feedback that matches up perfectly with dashboard firmware devices and feedback and so all we need to do to add another one of these is just do a little copy pasta We'll say documentation. The docs, I don't know, something like that. 
the icon will be the icon is short for uh, material icons and so i will show you like one of them set to chat so um, this is one of the cool things that quasar does for you out of the box like chat um round, i want to build rounded categories all oh here we go yeah chat see uh just by giving it the name of the material design icon chat gives you the um that icon and so we will pick one that's like do like doc doc it's more like book is what i want i think you can look through these though let's do book i don't know maybe menu book i don't really love any of these library books i think it's going to look too much like feedback You're telling me there's not well i guess we could just do book that looks weird though like a bookmark menu book Let's try menu book or book. We'll start with book. And then the link that we want for this will be just a link, oops, to here. And so do that. And then if I save that and then I do I need to be running well hmm. no, I should be able to run standby let me look at something here wizard.conf yeah I'll just point it at the the live for now Okay, sorry. Uh, all right, now if I pop open this and just say Quasar Dev, it will build it. And it's going to run it on port 8080. Okay. I know I respond great. And now I can just do local host 8080. And we can just log in with our Okay, so now you see I've got documentation, read the docs. When I click on it, oh, it's going to do that. Oh, I hate that. That's not what we want to do. Um, okay, we'll fix that in a second. But documentation, read the docs. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I like having it there. Let's try it. The other one that we wanted to look at was menu book. Let's try that and see how that looks. Menu book. And then it just, it like rebuilds and it'll even reload for you normally. Uh, I think I like that better. Hmm. This is where it'd be handy to like have viewers to say, give me your opinion. We're gonna have to make this decision without all of you future viewers. 
This was this was your chance. This was your chance to have input. You missed it. Documentation. That's a little cleaner though. I'm calling it. I'm just doing. I'm gonna leave it like that. Documentation. Read the docs. But it's not opening up to where I want it to open up. I thought the link. So now is when we do need to look at the component and say, why are you doing that? Essential link. And um, to link. It's that. It's the two. How does the basic project work? Uh, I'm going to have to go back and look at. I had. Hmm. Oh, href link. And I can even do target blank. Oh, that's going to mess me up, though. I think if I this is this is a sorry, I dragged this over. This is like the out of the box essential link code that you get with Quasar. That's going to mess us up if I do this. It's definitely going to mess us up. Almost positive of it. So it's rebuilt. Let's reload it. Why is it logging me out? That's weird. Okay, so now, like, if I click, oh, why is it not getting any? Products or anything, that's weird. Oh, probably because I'm getting errors, almost for sure, because I'm getting errors. Um. Well, yeah, it's okay. Um, stand by. I need to check on something. Okay, um, had a knock at the door. Um, all right, that so that's definitely broken us. I mean, I think that's clear. So, but we do want the href, and I do want it to be blank. So, I think what we can do here. Well, first of all, let me just change it back to this. And make sure that that truly does fix us. Oh, I know. Uh, I know what's happening. Okay, I know exactly what's happening. I need to 
I am hitting the production back end, but the production back end delivers everything via HTTPS secure cookies, which I'm getting across site. So it's trying to save, like I'm getting, I'm hitting an HTTP, HTTPS back end and it's trying to say, hey, localhost insecure, can I save a secure cookie there? And it's like, no, nah, that's, that's not happening. So I need to point this back to local. And then I need to fire up the local server. Okay, so I'll just, this will just take a second. I'm gonna open up another project here on another page entirely. Uh, wait. NPM run dev. And we'll get into that code another day, but uh, that's the back end. So now I'm running the back end locally and I'm pointing to it locally. It's going to make me log in again because, darn it. Uh, great. Now this should all work as expected, I believe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There we go. There's everything I'm. Oh, and it's pointing at the. Huh, it's pointing at the old one. Cool. I got. I can see. Cool. So I've got documentation here, but again, it's not going to work because I'm going to click on it. And it's going to try and open it as part of that, which is a problem. And then everything else, if I if I change it to be href and tag a and stuff. Um, it's going to open in another one. So what I think we'll do, what I think we can do, is just do a little quasar if else. And so we'll say, I wonder if we can do, well, we might have to do the whole thing. All right, well, yeah, we're going to have to do the whole thing. Okay, so what it is, we're going to have two Q items. And we'll say that this one is a V else. And we'll say this one is a V if. So this is part of... Um, uh, not Quasar specifically, the, this sort of VF is part of, uh, oh my goodness, I can't even remember what it's called now, um, Vue.js, which is a framework for doing front-end stuff like this. Um, and so we do VIF, what are we really trying to say? Link dot... We'll say link dot substring. This is kind of a hack. HTTP. Uh, we want to essentially say it doesn't start with. So link dot substring. Uh, does not equal zero. And it's complaining. This conditional, since the type string and number have no overlap. Oh, sorry, not substring. Come on, index of does not equal zero. So it doesn't start with that. So now, it should look the same. When I click firmware, I should go to firmware and devices should take me to devices. And feedback should take me to feedback. But now documentation. Oh, well, I got to change it. <laughs> it's not going to, it's going to do the exact same thing. And then change it to be. Um, href equals that. Oh, I had the file open. Let's open that back up. I want to do this essentially.
I want to say tag A, target blank, href link, and then save it. So if it does start with HTTP or HTTPS, okay, so again, let's reload here. Devices takes me there, there, dashboard, and then documentation opens up in a new page, just like that. Okay, so that works. That's a way to do it. I don't know if that's the best way to do it. Um, yeah, documentation just takes me straight over to documentation. Cool. And then, so that's, that's half of the puzzle. We said we wanted to make it in both places. So let's look at uh, doing it in the other place as well. I'm showing two viewers. If anybody joined and you're there, welcome. Glad to have you here. We, let's put something up here. So the way we would do that is going to be in this main layout. And way up here at the top, we've got this. This drop down, Q drop down in this Q space. And so the way we can do this, I don't want to do Q. I basically want to just do a Q button. So like Q, and this is a Quasar. Q just button. And um, what kind of, I want it to be flat. I want to say two. Uh, not, yeah, just two equals. Gosh, it's been a while since I've done this. Two equal. Well, no. Can we do href? No. Okay, two. I don't know if two is what we want, but let's just try it. Let's just say HTTP s colon slash slash deploy the fleet dot io. And I mean, let's just let's just leave it at that for now. Let's just see what that looks like. Um, it doesn't look like anything. Did I get an error? Oh, I didn't get an error. Oh, there it is. Uh, I've got to put uh, I've got to put something in it. Um, let's do, well, let's do book again. I think this is where I, when I was constantly devving on the front end, uh, Quasar actually makes you extremely productive, but when you haven't done it in a while, uh, I can't remember. I think I can just say icon equals book. And then down in here, I can say docs like that. And then now... Uh, that's the, let's close this. That's the production docs. Okay. Um, and then, but like when I click on it, yeah, it's going to do that. Okay. So how do I link to external? Well, let's not worry about that right now. Let's answer the question. First of all, how does that look? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I like how it looks. And let's, here's one of the great things about uh, Quasar. I'll show you this real quick. We have all these, the, the documentation is, is quite good. So button, and then you can really just scroll down here and say, oh, how do I want this to look? See, look at this on the left. I think I'd rather it look like that. I think I'd rather, we're sorry, on the right actually like this. So on the right with icon, you just sort of expand this out and it'll show you a label on right icon right. So all I have to do is change that to icon right. Icon right, save it. And we're there. 
that, so that's, I mean, that's really cool. Like you don't have to figure out the CSS or anything like this. Like the, a lot of it's through decoration and um, attributes and stuff. And it's really, really powerful. I've, I've found that once you get into the flow of doing Quasar Dev, super, super productive. Um, I know a lot of people have strong opinions about frameworks and um, dependencies and stuff like that, but to get something going, I am not a UI developer as you may or may not be able to tell from how this all looks, but uh, Quasar is really nice because it, it limited what my choices were and how to do things because I just picked from this, you know, this giant list of components that are available for it. And so uh, I like that. Uh, it'd be nice if there was like a little more spacing, which I think is just as easy as giving it like a padding. Um, you do like a class equals quasar padding padding all. Well, let's just go. I always go like extra large because like you have you have extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large, and that's a theme throughout quasar. But if we just make it extra large, we can see right away like if it's doing what we want. Okay, so it just like fattened this whole thing up. So. That's not exactly what I'm looking for. Um, I'm just looking for some space. And I think it's just gonna eat all the white space here. Unless I do something like... Um, span class equals. A quasar margin, it would be right. Okay, too large. And then close out the span like that. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, see, that's more what I'm looking like. Uh, my, I mean, not extra. I use extra large because it sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between medium and large or medium and small or small and extra small. So if I just go extra large, I can I can see right away if it's having the, the effect I want, which it is. So if I change this to like medium and then look at it, that's still kind of far. So it looks like extra small is the default and I probably want small. And again, getting it to open, we still have this problem. And we can solve that problem, but the question is, is do we like that? Docs up there and docs here. Do we need it in both places? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I feel like over here is fine. I don't feel like we need it in both places right now anyway. And I feel like the main navigation for everything, like this is the main navigation, which brings up another good UX point. This is the main navigation, except for when you wanna create a new product, in which case you come up here to do that. Now, I still like that because creating a new product is going to be pretty rare. Like this is your bread and butter when you're in here. Most people are likely to have a single product. I have multiple because I'm doing all sorts of testing. But most people are likely to have a single one. So they this is going to be their main interaction and flow. And it would be very rare. So I don't adding a create product over here seems noisy, unnecessarily noisy, because that's not how people are going to do that. I, I, it's not expected. You're not going to be like, oh, like firmware, and let me check on my devices that I've been working with. And oh, also, I create a product. That's not a thing. So I think I'm okay with that being up here. And I don't think I want docs up here. I think just having it right here with feedback. Then again, that begs the question, do I move feedback up here? Mm -hmm. These are great questions for a UX expert that could give me like 
some feedback on what the best practice is of like, and sometimes when I look at it and I can see, you know, good flows, it's easy to talk through, but this is one where I'm just not sure. Like, I think I'm just going to leave it on the sidebar for now. We just got to make a decision. I don't want to put feedback up here because I want feedback to be fairly obvious, at least as we're getting started. I think this is one of those scenarios where when I'm first launching this, I want feedback and documentation to be just as prevalent as all of the other options, like very easy to find right here in your face because this is where you're going to spend most of your time navigating. And as it progresses and um, I, I've kind of settled in on the, the features and things and the, the cycle of iteration slows down, feedback maybe becomes like a fixed item down here in the corner. Well, you can't see that because my head's in the way you know, down in the the opposite corner of where my mouse is right now. But like a little, you know, you see that on a lot of sites, add, you know, provide feedback. We could we can move it then when it doesn't need to be so prominent. The same thing with the documentation, in fact, um, as somebody gets set up and people get used to using the service and how the service works, we could probably put the documentation not so front and center. But for now, let's leave it front and center. Let's get rid of this docs up here. That's the decision. We're going with it. So let's, um, we'll just toss the changes out here in main layout. So let's come over here and look at our changes. Why is, oh, cause I have this other, I opened up that other, whatever. How do I get rid of, I don't want this. Here anymore. Close repository. Thank you. Okay. A central link. We've done the Q item V if the link dot index of HTTP does not equal zero, which means it doesn't start with HTTP. Do it the way we had it and then V else. So it does start with HTTP or HTTPS. Either way, the link will do the tag A target blank href link and everything else is the same right 30 pixel font size why am i seeing this only once oh it's all it, the rest of it's down here okay yes it's just the diff is showing a little funky that change we would like to keep this main layout we do not we don't want this button up here so we're just going to discard that change yes and then once again we are on the main branch here. Um, that is issue 47. So I'm going to say add link to documentation in sidebar. And just for kicks, I am. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not getting. What happened to my change here? Oh, that was my main layout. I got rid of it. <laughs> I threw out the whole file. Uh, okay. Uh, let's put it back. Documentation. Read the docs book and yeah, see it's gone. Um, the fleet.io. I'm just link it over to docs intro. We'll see. Okay. Save. Main layout, let's just before we stage it, let's make sure it works. Um, documentation, read the docs. If I click on it, it opens up a completely new page right at the documentation. Cool. That's exactly what we're looking for. 
So let's stage that change. And then again, I said that this is issue 47. So I'm going to say resolves number 47. Go ahead and commit that. And we'll push it. All right, that got marked as done. Cool. The next piece of feedback, I don't know that I'm going to tackle that tonight. I think I'm going to cut the stream here in a minute. Um, we got some good some good issues closed there. But the other piece of feedback, um, and I'm going to go ahead and cancel that, and we'll actually just close this out, was, let's log out. I didn't. Uh-oh. Why isn't that logging out? V on. What connection? What? Oh, because I <laughs> I quit it. Wow, see, it is time to end the stream. I'm getting I'm losing it here. Uh, let's just go to the the prod version of it. And let's log out. So the, the piece of feedback was when you create a new account, like this is all okay, but when you create it, the email that you get is like raw text that says like, thanks for, you know, creating an account with Deploy the Fleet. To verify your email, click the following link. It's, it's completely not um, styled at all. And so, and then when you click on the link, you get this, uh, I'm using um, Amazon uh, Cognito as my user management, um, user management, what service. And so the, you get this, the standard issue Cognito, like your account, like verification successful. And it's just a very, very blank, not styled web page and uh, his his feedback specifically was something along the lines of I feel like I just gave my email address to the dark web and I can see that so what I would like to do and maybe we'll take just a minute to do now I know I can style the email on incognito that's in space cognito the service from Amazon I can style the how the email is sent to a degree though I don't think I have full range of doing that and so it, I just typed in the text but I don't know what I can do about the verification page and I don't know if that's something I need to fix right now like it is valid feedback and he's right like it does feel super janky however if you come to here and you say I'm at deploy the fleet I've read your homepage and I'm convinced that it's something I want to play with. And then you put in your email and your password and such here. And then like I pop up a, a dialogue that says you need to verify your account, check your inbox. And then you go to your inbox and it says deploy the fleet verification, even though it's unstyled, like you're expecting that email. Like it, it looks shady, but it's completely expected and it shows up right when you're expecting it to show up. And then when you click on it, it says, you know, that part of it is again, very like, oh, verification successful. I don't know that I want to fix that right now. I'm going to have to think about that because again, I, I think if you were to get that random, if I were to just send you an email saying, hey, try out my service, deploy the fleet and click on this link to verify your email and it's plain text, you'd be like, what is this? But after... I mean, this isn't the most beautiful create an account page ever, but it is, you know, it matches the styling of the rest of the app. And so if you put your information in here and then you get an email immediately, I'm going to say that it's okay that it's not fully polished, but there's probably some simple things I could do 
to make that look nicer. And if it's not simple, I'm punting it. Like I'm not going to do it right now because I've got other things that are, are more important to, you know, get to launch on this. And so I think that'll do it for today's stream. We knocked out a few of those feedback items across multiple repos. It's coming together. Uh, it looks like, man, I really want to just give myself the goal of like, let's say Monday is launch. This next Monday, November, was that 16th? November 16th is launch day. And when I say launch, like I don't have some huge uh, push plan. I'm going to start dropping this in ESP 8266 forums, ESP 32 forums. I've been taking note of a few, few um, tech news uh, writers that I would send it to and say, hey, I created this new service. Here's a little bit about it. And, uh, you know, would you would you like to check it out or write an article about it? I'd be happy to give you, you know, a walkthrough on it. Um, some things like that. I also need to make video. <sighs> Monday's going to be hard. That's going to be really hard to hit. I got a lot of stuff that still needs to happen. Maybe we should shoot for the 23rd instead. That's the week of Thanksgiving. Kind of a dumb time to launch. I'll get back to you on that. We got to think about it. I'm really like... Uh, I'm trying not to push it off too much because we just, we need to get it out there. And like I gave it to my friend today, he gave me some great feedback and that's going to continue. It's not like I'm going to solve all of the feedback and then launch it. Like I'm going to, that's, that's what I want to get. Like his reactions are exactly what I want to get. And I feel confident in my ability of, for example, I'll tell him tomorrow, Hey, all those things you told me, they're all fixed and adjusted. And so I think that'll help as well. So I don't want to put it off too long. So that is going to do it for today's stream. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate anybody that's watching this after the fact. Um, like I said, it says that I've got two viewers here. I don't see anybody else in the, in the feed. So uh, whoever you are out there, if you are watching or if it's just a Twitch glitch, welcome. Thanks for sticking around with me. And um, I hope everybody has uh, an amazing rest of their day.